Hi families, it is Miss Martell here. I have another story for you. What I picked today is Bunny's Book Club. I love this story because it shows us what the magic of a book can be and where it can take you. And especially right now when we're stuck at home that a book can take you to a lot of different places, uh, especially if you're using your imagination. And also the love of books and I hope every day it, during distance learning that we are at least learning the love and the importance of stories. So this is by um, Annie Silvestro and it's illustrated by Tatiana Mae West, Bunny's Book Club and it is published by Doubleday Books for Young Readers. Cool beans. Okay. So what I love about this book is it starts right away and you see the library card What who has checked out this book. So it's been checked out so far by Bunny, Bear, Porcupine, and Raccoon. So that already has my brain thinking of some of the characters that are going to be in this story. So again, the author is Annie Silvestro and the illustrator is Tatiana Mae West. So if you want to pause, you can talk to your family. What does the author do? And what does the illustrator do? They have two very different jobs to come together to make one awesome story. Bunny's Book Club. Bunny loved books. He loved them ever since he first heard the lady with the red glasses reading aloud outside the library. As he listened, Bunny imagined himself climbing mountains captaining a ship, ruling a kingdom. But when summer ended, story time moved back inside. Bunny wasn't sure if animals were allowed in the library, but Bunny was sure he couldn't live without books. Night after night, he could hardly sleep for wishing he had something to do. He had to do something. So when he saw a flashlight in his paws and hope in his heart, Bunny jumped out of bed and tiptoed through the dark. But when he reached the library door, it was locked. So were the windows. Bunny tried digging, climbing, yanking. Those are a lot of good action words. You could act those out. Nothing worked. So you can see all the different places that Bunny tried to get into the library. Until finally he noticed the book return. The shiny handle was far above his head, but it was no match for a high hopping Bunny hungry for books. Bunny leapt, he clung to the bar, flung himself over and wiggled his cotton tail through the slot. He landed inside with a thud. Bunny's eyes sparkled at the sight of the shelves bursting with books. It was better than a field full of fresh, crunchy carrots. Bunny didn't know where to start. He took a deep breath. It smelled as if he were wrapped inside the pages of his favorite book. He followed his nose to the adventure section. There he found stories about swashbucklers, sharks, and superheroes. Bunny greedily grabbed them all. His whiskers twitching with excitement, he slipped his treasures through the book slot one by one. Now, I love this illustration because you can see two different settings in the story. You can see inside the library, and then you can see where the book return goes, outside and back in the forest. So I love this, and you know that this is the wall of the building. So I really like the perspective of this illustration. Then, performing his best balancing act, Bunny wobbled home. He couldn't wait. To dig in. 
And so Bunny returned to the library each night. He searched and sneaked, then scurried back to read. Soon his home was more books than Burrow. Then one evening, a loud knock startled Bunny. He closed his book and opened the door. Where have you been? asked Porcupine. Reading, said Bunny. Why, said Porcupine. Bunny's eyes popped wide open. Why, he sputtered. Have you ever been to the library? It was time for Bunny to let Porcupine in on the secret. Are you sure this is a good idea, said Porcupine. Calm your quills, said Bunny. I'm too prickly, I'll never fit. Bunny pushed and shoved until pop, went Porcupine. Bunny slipped in and flipped on the flash, flipped on his flashlight. Whoa, said Porcupine. I know, said Bunny. Do you think there's a story about balloons? I've always wondered about balloons. Most definitely, said Bunny. Now I want you to pause. Why would a porcupine always wonder about balloons? What would be keeping a porcupine from touching a balloon? Sure enough, porcupine found books on balloons and on deserts and dunes and caterpillars and cocoons. When Bunny handed him one about hedgehogs, he hugged it. The two friends took turns cramming books into the slot. Their towers teetered so high they could barely carry them. Back at Bunny's, they cozied up with cups of tea and carrot muffins. Together, they read until sunrise. One night, Bear noticed the light on at Bunny's. He opened the door and tripped over a stack of books. What's going on, said Bear. Here, said Bunny, handing him a book. Bear made room and settled in to read. Soon, more curious animals began visiting. Do you have any books about outer space, said Bird? Or about volcanoes, asked Mole. I'd like a ghost story, said Mouse. I think it's time for a field trip, said Bunny. One by one, the animals stuffed themselves inside the library. Bear caused a bit of a delay. They scattered about, sniffling the stacks, pawing over pages. Squirrel gathered stories about the circus. Raccoon nabbed one about outlaws and bandits. Fa Frog found a fairy tale. No one heard the key in the front door. No one heard the clack, clack, clacking of footsteps. No one heard the light flick on. What do we have here? Said the librarian. The animals looked up in shock. Bunny gasped. Porcupine gaped. Bear groaned. Follow me, she said. The animals marched slowly behind her. We're done for, whispered Porcupine. All libraries have rules, said the librarian sternly. Bunny's whiskers trembled. Porcupine's back bristled. Bear eyed the door. Bunny stepped forward to take the blame. The librarian leaned down. The first rule is, every book lover must have one of these, she said. She handed Bunny and his friends shiny new library cards. Now you may borrow books, she said, smiling. As long as you return them, of course. Bunny couldn't believe his ears. They could keep coming to the library? He beamed at his fellow readers. They bounced to the shelves. They picked the perfect book and he proudly checked out the very first official selection for Bunny's Book Club. And that's the end. I hope you have a good day.